I would say Prairie Interlace is a, an introduction to the explosion of interlace practices on the prairies during that period, from around 1960 to 2000, when fiber artists were experimenting with a myriad of, of different techniques and approaches to the use of fiber and yarn and other materials to create a response to, to our world, to our land, to our cultures, and to, to our sense of self and our bodies. So one of the themes was the idea of body politics. Of course, feminism was such a, uh, a force through the late 60s and early 70s. Many of the artists in the exhibition were self-proclaimed feminists and uh, working to enhance rights uh, and, and visibility of women. Another uh, important theme was working on and off the grid working beyond the loom and really embracing uh, modernists' call for experimentation and the use of new materials and questioning the status quo. Uh, so another theme that we identified and addressed was the idea of elemental landscapes. How, of course, on the prairies, that horizon line has been so incredibly influential and so such a potent signal of place and of this place in particular and we see that horizon line addressed in a variety of different ways through the works in the show and of course weaving with that grid that warp and weft uh, is such a wonderful way to kind of address that and then the fourth theme that we addressed was the idea of soft power and how many of these textiles had been commissioned for architectural spaces and we were really entranced by the idea of placing these once probably trivialized domestic textiles, placing these into places of power and of visibility uh, as really a testament to A, the creativity of the prairies, but also of, of mainly women artists that were making, making textiles. The journey of Prairie Interlace for me really began about a decade ago when we were approached by Cadillac Fairview, the company that manages the TD Center. And they were looking to decommission a number of tapestries in their uh, possession, which had been commissioned to grace the TD Center when it was first unveiled back in the mid-1980s. Kaya Sanelma Harris was one of those artists, a, a wonderful Saskatoon weaver. She had created a piece that was uh, absolutely monumental in scale. I mean, uh, it's 24 panels, each 13 feet high, 3 feet wide. It takes a wall of approximately 70 eight feet wide to show it properly, and that's uh, exactly what we have. Kaya's work is really part of uh, a larger body of work that was produced for modernist buildings. Uh, so, you know, you had a bunch of these large monumental spaces, interiors that were quite cold. And so very early on, um, in the, even going back to the 40s and 50s, architects were working with tapestry artists to create works that would warm those interiors, to give them a human feel and a human scale. And that's exactly what uh, Kaya did. She brought Saskatchewan landscape into the heart of Toronto's financial district. What I hope Prairie Interlace is, is a surprise. So the first time that you set foot into the gallery and take a look at some of these pieces, it's going to surprise you and then cause you to wonder and think about what else might be out there in terms of the story of textile history on the prairies. One of the things that this show um, does is show how important uh, collective craft practices are to a number of different communities. So, uh, for instance, with Tahashina, the Tahashina rugs, there was an opportunity for younger makers to come and gather with some of the elders of the community to speak their language, to also work with the designs and learn about them. But we also saw that with the Prince Albert textile community, where we had a number of weavers come together to honor the work of Marguerite Van Walsam and Kate Waterhouse. One of the things that's important to remember with craft is that it's not just about the process. So in this case, it's not just about spinning, 
yarn into wool and then taking it and putting it in a shuttle and going, you know, in and out and doing your plain weave. But that there's a lot of concept behind craft. And I think a really good example of that is the work of Anne Newdigate. Her work is layered with meaning, not only about place, like you see in the piece We Manny, where she's uh, talking about um, politics related to place with um, her home country of South Africa, but also about Métis history here on the prairies. So it's got all of these layers in it. And one of the things that I think this show will hopefully do is is represent the underrepresented conceptual underpinnings of crafted objects like you see in Prairie Interlace. What excites me the most about this work is its potential to get people to think differently about the prairies in the sense that there is an aha wow moment when you see some of these pieces. And the prairies isn't nothing. You don't drive through the prairies and see nothing. You actually see a lot. But what you have to be able to do is to slow down and not look for the mountains and the waterfalls, but to look for that beautiful aspect of light or maybe that specific dip where bison had at one point rolled around in the ground. It's about looking deeply and carefully. It gets you to think about the prairies in a different way rather than just a wheat field with a grain elevator, which is what comes to mind typically. So next time you're driving through the prairies, slow down and think about these pieces.